Erev Tov Chavrim, I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live, February the 25th, 2018. Disturbing video we have discovered here from the, uh, the Department of State. Speaking about in one part of this video here that we're going to share with you tonight, uh, wanting to shine a spotlight, encouraging media, breaking the actual rules of the State Department to encourage media to go and shine a spotlight on the events that are happening in Eastern Gota, which is the suburb of Damascus, and more specifically to shine that spotlight on the group that is known as the White Helmets. Uh, we're going to look into this tonight. We're going to be discussing a little bit about the sarin gas attack that happened in 2013, talking about some of the others as well, but more specifically looking into this group known as the White Helmets, what was said by the State Department. Uh, but first, I want to go to an article about Eastern Gota, what is actually happening there. A new article that just comes out uh, today on The Guardian, Syrian death toll over 500 as Eastern Gota bombing continues. Israeli News Live is very dedicated in bringing unbiased coverage of the events that are happening around the world. I have no funding from any government, any private organization. It is the listeners of this broadcast that support what we do because you trust us to tell you the truth. And I do it in a very unbiased way. I am an American and I love my country, the United States of America. I am Jewish by birth and I love Israel and support my brothers and sisters in Israel very much as well. But I find myself caught in a situation much like that of the early prophets that we read about in the Old Testament. And no, I am not a prophet. I am just your brother. I am nobody. But I find myself in a situation similar to them like Isaiah, like Jeremiah, like Hosea. They cried out against the evils that were happening in the government of their day. And these were all Jewish prophets, or Israelite prophets, I should say. Look at Samuel the prophet in condemning. He was angry with Israel because they rejected God as being king over them and instead wanted to be like the rest of the world. Look at Jeremiah, thrown in prison hated by his own people. Micah, the same, the son of Imlam I'm speaking of, Micah, the son of Imlam, who said that he saw Israel scattered like a sheep, a, shepherd, a sheep with no shepherd. Isaiah was sawn in half because he told the truth about what the government was doing. And so therefore I'm hated by many because I'm willing to tell you the truth. I would love to say wonderful things. I, and of course, now I realize when it comes to Israel, soon their eyes are going to come open. Soon they're going to recognize their Messiah. Soon great things will happen. But before it does, we know the prophecies that she's going to go under travail. It's going to be Jacob's trouble. You're going to have wars that are going to happen like, like nuts. But even when it comes to churches, I have to tell it like it is. I can't whitewash it. I can't say that the Vatican does great things. Are there good Catholic people? No, sure there is. And sometimes when I say that, I catch it from the other side. Brother, there's no good Catholics. Well, you know, if God says in Revelation 18, 4, come out of her, my people, that you be not partakers of her sins and her plagues, there must be his people in amongst, not just the Catholic Church. I believe that's dealing with organized systems that are all joining back up with the Catholic Church as well. But that's not what I'm here about tonight, friends. I'm here because very troubling situation that is happening. And yes, in East Gota, Russia and Syria bombing this jihadist there, and there's being loss of life. There are, uh, there are also the innocent women and children that are dying. This is horrible, and I agree with that. It is horrible. But what is really going on in this part of Syria? What the, what the mainstream media doesn't want you to tell, what the State Department doesn't want you to spotlight on, is the fact that the jihadist groups that are fighting there have been shelling Damascus suburbs, including killing civilians, as well as trying to target the military in that part of the region that has been guarding Damascus the last stronghold of the Syrian government. They've been doing it now for, for days, since the 18th of February. They've been shelling that. Well, finally, uh, 
a, a Russian facility got struck. Now, according to Russia, no Russians were killed. But no Russian woman ever admits to what happens in that. And now Russia got involved, and they begin to heavily target these jihadist groups. Now, and they've not stopped either. Now, they did agree with the ceasefire, but you have to remember, ISIS, Al-Qaeda, Al-Nusra, all these different terrorist groups are still open season. That's why it's not stopped. And, of course, the White Helmets are coming, becoming famous, even more famous, from the propaganda they spread. Let's first take a look at what the State Department had to say here, the spokesman here. Please listen carefully, and we've got a whirlwind of information to cover. I encourage you to listen closely. ...events and uh, humanitarian situations across the world. Uh, there is no better advocate for what is going on and shining a spotlight on the horrors that are taking place in Eastern Ghouta than each of you. If I can implore you, and I know you do this anyway as part of your jobs, talking to your editors, talking to your producers, saying this is important, this is something we've got to cover, now is the time to cover it. So many people have come to us saying, what is the United States doing about the situation in Eastern Ghouta? What can we do? The answer to that is we can shine a spotlight on that. That is what I'm attempting to do right now. That is what the government is attempting to do. And I hope you will be a part of that, shining the spotlight on that. Uh, I want to thank Elise last night. Uh, she had included me uh, in seeing a documentary. I'm not supposed to encourage people to go see things or do some things, but I don't care. I'm going to break that rule because I think it's just that important. A documentary last night called The Last Man, The Last Men in Aleppo. White Helmets. It was about the situation in Aleppo, Syria. And in there, you saw the humanitarian disaster. You saw these selfless, selfless men who were leaving their families every day to go try to save those who were buried in the rubble who, or who had uh, been victims of attacks. Um, that situation is being replicated today in Eastern Ghouta. We don't have to see this happen this way. Shine a spotlight on it. Let the world know exactly what is happening. We will back you in this. I will assist you in any way I can in helping you to shine a spotlight on this important issue. Uh, Interesting, isn't it? State Department. You know, they talk about the CNN being the Clinton News Network. Now, the White House State Department is getting all the news networks to shine a spotlight on propaganda. It's not just my words, friends. Let me tell you something. Like I said, I'm an American. I love my country. And when it comes to humanitarian crisis, I care about those lives that are being lost as well. But are you aware that the majority of the so-called White Helmet Syrian Civil Defense Team, which there is a real Syrian Civil Defense Team, and it's not the White Helmets. Most of these are not even Syrians. They're, they have been brought in from other countries. Let's take a look. Let me share with you what really is going on. This here is Henry Lowendorf. And it's a little bit lengthy what you're going to listen to here, but it is important that you hear Henry out. This was back in 2015 or 2016, a delegation of Peace Corps movements, uh, of different individuals, heads, presidents, etc., all went to Syria. In fact, you can see here you have Alfred. I can't think of Alfred's last name. We have Alfred right here. Sorry, I got the commercial attached to it. There's the whoop, there we go. Hang on. I just want to quickly so you can see. This is the delegation right here. This is Alfred. This is Henry Lowendorf. I forget the names of these ladies here. All five of these, including this man here, were part of a peace group movement that went to Syria to do a fact-finding mission to find out what was going on. They reported this to the United Nations. There are a handful of reporters, including some others that are in the room there. One reporter totally stunned by what he was hearing here. And you're going to see why, because I think that Henry Lowendorf really puts the true emphasis on what they saw there. Keep in mind, they, none of these people that went were funded for this, neither by the government, neither by their organization. They were self-funding. The Syrian government didn't pay them a dime. Nobody. They wanted to see, as humanitarians, what was really going on. And this, of course, was because of the situation in Aleppo as well. All right, 
Let's listen to a little bit about what Henry actually says in this video here. Let me find the right place to start it. Propaganda. Back it up just a little bit. What she is seeing as, as uh, she investigates further um, the, she, the truth of what's happening. In the I series. believe is Ava Bartlett. I don't remember for sure, but I, I think, think he's talking about Ava what Bartlett. What Alfred said is so true. We are fighting a mass of propaganda that has demonized the Syrian government, demonized its leaders, a, an effort that precedes every other intervention that the United States has made over the course of many, many decades in order to convince people that it's okay for quote-unquote humanitarian reasons to overthrow a government and to replace it with whatever. The United States prefers uh, a government that is not independent, that is a willing uh, participant in what the That's US, the shocked the reporter. Policy is. I got to hear so this what question. We saw he in, was shocked. In Damascus, and what we saw in the two villages we visited outside Damascus, belies the propaganda that has. Um, overwhelmed us. It's hard, it, it, it's hard for even those of us who have been in the peace movement for a long time. It's hard for us to ignore this propaganda. It is so uh, well orchestrated. We spoke to, we spoke to uh, members of industry, the chamber of industry. We spoke to leaders in the student union, the national student union. We spoke with uh, NGOs that are involved in taking you know, care uh, of the orphans of, of those who have died in this war on both sides. They don't discriminate. I'm going to fast forward just a little bit. He's going to talk about all the different groups that they've met with here, but to save time, we'll go back to a little bit further down in the video here. The damage. We saw villages that are basically Christian villages that have been besieged by the terrorists but have now been liberated. And the damage done to a shrine in a village called Malula which is a village where they still speak Aramaic, the language of Jesus, and the attacks on the Christian population. One of the things I bring back, there are two things I want to mention finally that, that we feel are really important. One is that while the United States would like to divide the Syrians up by religion or within a religion by the different beliefs within that religion, there wasn't a Syrian we talked to who would accept that. We spoke to the Grand Mufti and he said, people ask me how many Muslims there are in Syria and his response is always 23 million. That's the population of Syria. And when we talked to the, the bishop of the Orthodox, of one of the Orthodox churches, he answered the same thing. The number of Christians is 23 million. We will not allow ourselves to be divided up the way the United States has divided up the people of Iraq or, or Libya or Afghanistan or so many other countries. We won't allow that. And that unity, I believe, has led to the ability of the Syrians to withstand an invasion by the most powerful country in the world and its most powerful allies in Europe, its most powerful allies in the Middle East, with, with what is a vicious attack on the Syrian people. The second is the sanctions. I have to admit that I did not know before I went that the United States has imposed sanctions on Syria in a way that's similar to the sanctions that the United States imposed on Iraq in the 1990s in order to weaken that country and that government that the, the United States admits killed 500,000 children in Iraq during the 1990s sanctions. That sanction, set of sanctions, 
means that the Syrian people cannot get medicines that they desperately need. They cannot get factory parts that they need to maintain their economy. They can't get infant formula and many other things. Their students... Think about that. They can't get infant formula. They can't get medicine. Children's, children are dying of different diseases because of these things. Is this what we're doing to Russia? And is this what we're doing to North Korea? I mean, granted, you have to understand, friends, I am definitely not for North Korea with the nuclear weapons that they have and wanting to uh, attack the United States. But have we lost our humanity as Americans? We talk about the humanitarian crisis in East Gota, but you have to remember, and you're going to find out tonight, the Syrian civil defense, neither Al-Qaeda, neither Al-Nusra, or the other three terrorist groups that are fighting inside of East Gota right now against Damascus, trying, you know, you have to understand, the U.S. and they, their allies are backing the collapse of Damascus, even according to, as the scripture says in Isaiah 17, Damascus will fall. But at what price? The stronghold of Ephraim will also collapse with it, which is the Christian community, will collapse because Syrian government is taken out. Yeah, why? Because as uh, Henry Lohendorf points out, they had visited the Christian communities that had been under siege and under attack by the U.S., NATO, and their Middle Eastern allies were attacking and killing these Christians. The, the man was there. He's an American. Most of the delegation are Americans. It's not just Steve Benoon that says these things. All right? Now, let's take a deeper look at what's going on. As I mentioned, the State Department wants to shine a spotlight on this group that they say, oh, we can't tell you, we can't support it, it's going outside of what we're supposed to do, but I want to shine a spotlight, but they made sure it was the white helmets that they want to shine the spotlight on. Isn't it interesting that it's more about what the white helmets are doing to quote unquote save lives? What about the true Syrian civil defense team that saves lives unequivocally, whether they're Syrian or not? Not in the case of what you're about to find out. Newsweek, mainstream media. June 22nd, 2017. Syria's White Helmets, subject of Oscar-winning film, caught dumping dead soldiers. Let me make it clear. Mutilated dead soldiers. All right? And more than one Syrian civil defense team member, if I'm not mistaken here, um, I don't know if this picture here shows all of them there. Normally the ones with the white helmets, uh, white helmets on are those that are part of the Syrian civil defense team. I believe he is with the sticker on the back of his helmet there. Uh, but the thing is, they did a good thing. Remember, they fired the guy. They said he went against their, their plans. That We're not supposed to do that. It says here, a volunteer rescue group in Syria that is subject of an Academy Award winning film has fired one of its members after he was caught handling the corpses of fighters who supported the Syrian government. Syrian civil defense, commonly referred to as the White Helmets, released a statement Tuesday announcing it had dismissed one of its volunteers over a gross breach of the group's codes in the southeastern Syrian government of Dada. The statement came in response to an extremely graphic video shared on social media that featured a man in a White Helmets t-shirt assisting the armed militants in disposing of the mutilated corpses of fighters aligned with the Syrian president Bashar al-Assad. So it's definitely not the picture they have up here, right? They didn't want to show you that. I guess not. Like in this article right here. This one here, I'll save it for you to look at. It's an investigation, White Helmets committing acts of terror across Syria, how they began their funding. It says here, it was established in March 2013 by the British ex-military officer with 300,000 in seed funding from Japan, the UK, and the US. Oh, I'm sorry, did they say a volunteer? Please. What about on this case here on Facebook here? Here's another one of your Syrian uh, excuse me, white helmets. I don't even want to call them Syrians. President Bashar al-Assad said that there was 35 different nationalities fighting against this country. You just saw where Henry Lohendorf, right? 
was talking about the propaganda that we're being fed here in the West that is unprecedented to anything else that's ever been done. And this particular Facebook images here, they show a multitude of white helmets. And according to their charter, they're unarmed. Well, this white helmet member here runs around with a, uh, looks like a 60 caliber machine gun. This white helmet guy right here, he's got his scoped rifle, not sure exactly which particular caliber that is, with his nice Al-Qaeda friends. Same thing with this uh, uh, white helmet carrying his nice machine gun. This white helmet guy with his machine gun fighting on the lines there. They shouldn't have put this one up just because he's got a sword don't mean nothing. This one right here as well. The white helmet's band sticker is at the top right there. He's got an RPG in his hand. That's the white helmets. And there's hundreds of pictures that have exposed what they're up to. And in fact, this one right here is going to be one you won't forget. You remember this young man right here? Well, the White Helmets really became famous with this propaganda picture right here. This boy's parents, and believe me, it was really a bombing that happened at the house where his family lived. His brother did later die. But the White Helmets used this young man as propaganda. There were many media groups that recognized something was amiss about that. They rush him into the van, put him down. Nobody's given the kid first aid. They all back up, and that's where they made their mistake. There were other photographs that show everybody standing at the back of the van taking pictures of the kid, taking video footage of the kid. What about treating the child that has been in a bombing? And of course, they claim Russian planes were flying overhead and dropping bombs. Well. Interesting. Again, as Henry Lowendorf pointed out, the mass propaganda, right? Well, looky here. This was reported here on which, which, let me get the article that we're in. The Independent, Aleppo's boy in the ambulance, Omran Daknish, safe and well in newly emerged footage. Little boy who uh, epitomized the hell of Russian-backed Syrian government bombing of rebel-held East Aleppo appears in good health and is now living in regime-held territory. You know, I hate the way they just call it regime. It was a legitimate government at one time. I, I guess maybe people have forgot about that. You know, and let me tell you something. Friend. I'm not here to be biased with you. I want to be honest with you. I'm not, I, I don't have any agendas here. i got to tell you the truth. But here he is right here. He doesn't seem to have any scars or anything from what I can tell. I'm not saying that he wasn't injured, but nothing that seemed to be life-threatening. It says right here, new photos and video of serpents, and his name is actually Omran Daknish, the little boy whose bloody, dusty face became a symbol of civil su civilian suffering during the siege of Aleppo last year. Omran's family talked to Syrian state media and pan-Arab al Mayadeen TV in interviews broadcast on Monday. In the footage, Omran is healthy and well, cuddling his father, siblings playing with a ball, and waving a Syrian uh, regime flag. Okay, goes on to say, the interviews are the first time the little boy has been in the public eye since photos of the video of him in the back of the White Helmets ambulance after an airstrike shook the world in August 2016. His older brother Ali later died of wounds sustained in the same bombing. Speaking to reporters, Omran's father said that the family had refused, refused interviews with pro-opposition outlets and kept a low profile until the siege barricades fell at the end of last year and the family crossed into government-held territory. Why do they want to go to government-held territory? Maybe because they really are Syrians and not all these paid jihadists that have been shipped into Syria to overthrow the country. And friends, remember, remember what General Wesley Clark, when he spilled the information of what the Pentagon was planning on doing. 
Always remember that. When we hear all this talk of war and we got to take down Syria, they're an evil regime and Russia is a big, bad, wicked empire. I'm not saying that what Syria and Russia is doing and trying to take back this country is not causing the loss of life. I know it is. I hate it. I hate it with a passion. But I realize too, what do they do? Just stand there and do nothing while all these terrorist organizations just run over the Syrian government and crush it to pieces? When we have as Christian people and, and, and Jewish people that are listening, and even Arab, Arabic people, Muslims that listen to this broadcast too, I know they do. You guys know good and well that General Wesley Clark came out and a general of the United States Army and exposes the United States' plan to take down seven countries in five years. Now, they never made their timeline, but included in that list was Syria. Also was Iran, also was Iraq, also was Libya. Boy, they're right on target. Lebanon. And you think it's just a civil war? That's how they begin to weaken the nation before they take it out. Lebanon is next, don't worry. In Iran, of course, as well. And they're using Syria as the launching pad to justify knocking both of those out. And, I, and believe me, I'm not for Iran whatsoever. Iran, besides their threats against Israel, and even Russia saying to them, threatening to, to wipe Israel off the map is unacceptable. Okay? So I'm not for Iran. And also the fact that they make their women live like prisoners behind cages that they have to look out slits in, their, in these hoodies they have to wear. You know, let me tell you something. If you're a Muslim and you, have, you wear a burqa because that's what you feel like you want to do, I'm not against that. But I mean to tell you, I see some extremism that happens in the Middle East. Syria was not one of those places unless whatever group wanted to be that way. But look at the Kurdish women. They can live in freedom. But speaking of the Kurds, look what's happening in Afrin. You want to talk about a massacre of people, the Turkish government, you want to put a spotlight, State Department, why don't you put a spotlight on your NATO ally, Turkey, who you are allowing to massacre the Kurds, who you claim to be supposedly supportive of. And in fact, if anything, in that very State Department video right there, this lady here, she goes on to say to you on there that the Kurds in east of the Euphrates are leaving in large droves to go help their friends in Afrin. And when one of the reporters brings up the fact, Matt, Matt's the one that brings it up, Matt's been there a long time, Matt says, what about the farmer that the Turkish fighters come and they kill a civilian, a Turkish farmer, just so they can steal his tractor. Oh, she said, I know nothing about that at all. I don't know what's going on about that. Oh, but you know what? They're really worried, though, about all the Kurds that are leaving eastern, the eastern side of the Euphrates to go help those in Afrin. Why? Oh, you might lose. You might lose the eastern side. Maybe the Russians and Syrians will take back the rest of their land, or the Syrians will take back their land, and Russia will just help them. But you won't shine a spotlight on what Turkey's doing, will you? No, because it's a NATO partner. You know, and as you said in this video as well, Rex Tillerson, he's over there. He's very mindful about what's going on over there. He got over there and he cheerleaded on Erdogan, boy. And now the Kurds you could care less about. And I'll tell you something. Many Syrians that I know, they don't like the Kurds. But you know what? I stand with the Kurds as well because these are some people that have fought hard to liberate Syria from ISIS. That's why I say I'm not biased. I'm not going to take one side or the other. I'm going to tell you the truth. You want to know the truth? Listen to Israeli News Live. You want your ears tickled? I guarantee you there's a lot of people out there posing to be Christians that are saying they're Christians, and I really kind of question if they really are. They tell you they're telling you the real news. Jeez. All right. So we move on. There's that boy. And, of course, his parents said... In an interview with uh, Kenan Alusa and a presenter for the Syrian government run TV, who once took a selfie with the corpse of the opposition fighters, Omran's father said that his son had been used as a propaganda tool by rebel forces and that the family always had always been pro-regime. 
There it is. So this little boy right here, his father says they were using his son. The rebels were using his son as a propaganda tool. I also saw in one article when this first came out, because I know that uh, uh, this particular news source is not going to tell you everything, but that his, uh, the Independent won't tell you the truth on that either, I don't believe, but they said that his, uh, his father had said at one other point there that his son was taken against their will. Now, in Gouda right now, Eastern Gouda right now, five terrorist groups create a joint command center in East Gouda. The Russian MOD. Why do you think they want a ceasefire? Isn't it interesting how the State Department says not just humanitarian aid, but supplies. To get supplies in there. New weapons. Why? Because they want Damascus to fall. And unfortunately, friends, Damascus will fall. We'll go into that before we close here. Now, I want to show you some more things real quick about this Al-Qaeda group. Excuse me. Yes, White Helmets. I shared this with you guys the other day, this picture here that was sent to me and I was asked to see, could I find an evidence that this had been doctored? This is your real Syrian civil defense team, the guys in red. These are the real Syrian civil defense team. But it was sent to me by a good friend of mine, a very well-respected journalist, that asked me, Steve, has this picture been tampered with? All right? Now, I can't be an absolute authority on this, but I have been a photographer, a videographer, my entire life, both professionally and as well as an amateur, high school, etc., negatives, you name it. I've done extensive work with uh, uh, Photoshop as well. And I was asked, Is, has this been tampered with? They could not believe that the white helmets would actually be there. I also sent the photo to my good friend Lorenzo, with already happened. He's an investigative Italian journalist. He ran it into a program that will tell you if it's been doctored or not. And it came back and said, there is a great possibility it's been altered. All right, when you're gonna do Photoshop, you're going to, to, in order to do this, you're going to blow this image up to about, instead of 500% was what the YouTube can do here, or Facebook can do, you would blow this thing up to about 5,000%. That's how you get rid of all the other photo out so that you can't tell that you've added these people in. Now, whoever did it did a good job. They made sure that the sun was pretty much the same way, but there is just a little bit of a difference here because the sun does not quite come around as far as it does like on this guy's back, but he's bending over. Maybe that's the reason. Could be a lot of issues there, but there was one thing that was very odd, and I'm going to blow just the photo up, but then I'm going to show you something else that I found interesting as well. In, whoop, wrong picture. That's, I got to go back down again because we got off of the picture there. Okay, there we go. I focused on the man's hand, ah, geez, did it again on the man's hand in the picture. Now, you can look, you can see, you got the white, you got the thinness of the fingers, etc. This is the real Syrian civil defense team member. But on the one guy here, this guy here, which is a white helmets guy, when I begin to zoom in, the thinness of the finger would be normal, but there is an oddity, not just on the glove and on the tips of the glove, but even all the way into the sleeve. It's part of another photograph that was not erased out when they were making the image. Now, I have blown that image up even larger, which I can show you here. Uh, and in fact, this, was, this one is very, very large. Um, I don't know if I can move it over for you or not. I'll just have to go down. This is where I did it at a thousand percent. And you can definitely clearly see in there all those extra parts that they forgot to take and erase out of, uh, out of the image there. All the way up his sleeve. That's how I know. Some people might say, oh, that could be dirt, but it's not. Even on the sleeve itself, the image was not erased out. So it definitely appears that the image has been tampered with from my own personal experience from what I can see. All right? That's the way I see on that. Very disturbing indeed. Also, you have, in this case here, the real Syrian civil defense saving real, sa saving real Syrians. 
not Oscar-winning white helmets, saving Al-Qaeda. I'll publish this in there for you as well. One last thing before we close out tonight, and I want to share something with you that I think is very important. That's this man right here, Aaron Erdem. In 2013, when Syria was attacked with sarin gas in the suburbs of Damascus, like many of you, I was outraged. I wanted to see the United States go in there and take out Bashar al-Assad. We were told everywhere that it was the regime, the Assad regime, that had gassed his own people and that he was stooping to the lows of all lows. But wars are won in public opinion by propaganda. This man right here, Aaron Erdem, and one other parliament member in Turkey knew that the sarin gas attack that was done in 2013 was most likely done by ISIS because in Turkey they had arrested the suspects and then they were set free. I'm gonna, I want you to hear it with your own words. Now, when Aaron Erdem brought this out, he brought it out in the parliament. The parliament would not hear his word, even though he was a, 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 an MP member of parliament. But once he brought it out to the media's attention to try to get the world to wake up with what was happening, then this came out. Turkish MP faces treason charges after telling RT ISIS used Turkey for transiting the sarin gas. All right. Let me back up, though. I want you to hear for yourself what Mr. Erd Aaron Erdem had to say. The, de the deliveries, but the case was closed. The MPs say that they have evidence to back up the allegation and they have presented it in Parliament. We spoke to one of them. It's kind of choppy in the video because I think they don't want you to know it. Chemical weapon materials were brought to Turkey and put together at ISIL camps in Syria, which was known as the Iraqi Al-Qaeda at the time. We have recordings to confirm this. The public prosecutor opened an investigation which led to those involved being detained. A week after another public prosecutor was assigned and all the detainees were released. They left Turkey crossing the Syrian border. The phone recordings in the indictment showed all, all the details of how the shipment was going to be made, from how it was prepared to the content of the labs and the source of the material, which drugs were going to be used, all dates, etc. From A to Z, everything was discussed and recorded. Despite all this evidence, the suspects were released. The incident that Aaron Erdem recounted took place in 2013, in August. That is only one of many evidences that have come out, even with the subsequent more sarin gas attacks, like in uh, Khan Shekun, where again it was alleged that the Syrian government had gassed its own people. But there has been overwhelming evidence. Even Seymour Hersh, the United Kingdom investigative journalist, found the actual records of that sarin gas that was smuggled from Libya that made its way through Turkey in the hands of ISIS uh, ended up in Syria that to later to be used on the Syrian population. So when Khan Shekun came around and there was a yet again alleged that the Syrian government had dropped sarin and gas when the hole in the road never matched a bomb being dropped by a, uh, a, a bomber above, but just a little tiny hole. And the Russians nor the Syrians were allowed to investigate this, but the United States refused uh, any cooperation uh, to determine whether or not this sarin gas actually came from the Syrian government's stockpiles. Uh, it was obvious that once again, there was more propaganda as we saw very much that was being brought out to us from the peace efforts by people such as Henry Lowendorf and the delegation that went to Syria. And so therefore, we have been very uh, suspicious of any 
of the allegations that the Syrian government has used sarin gas on its own population. But you have to understand, the Al-Qaeda, the Al-Nusra, uh, any of these other groups that are, that are battling the Syrian government, they don't have a problem with gassing the Syrian people. Why? Many of them are not Syrians. Read some of the reports here below, and you will see exactly what I'm talking about. It's very troubling information, friends, and I'm sorry to be the bearer of the bad news there, but we have to tell the truth. And in closing, I do want to share one biblical point here. And I want to say as well, if you want to hear the truth, and you want somebody to tell you the truth rather than lie to you, rather than say that everything we do is okay, and support the work we do here. If you'd rather have your ears tickled, there are places out there to have their ears tickled. And I'm gonna tell you something, friends, we are fighting for our lives here, but we know that we will be protected by God with no questions asked. The Holy Spirit will protect this ministry. We are being besieged by elements coming out of Rome. We have had our insights robbed and infiltrators let me say this to the jewish people living in israel in the orthodox community you have infiltrators coming in among you posing as new jewish converts that have ties to the government that are coming to discredit the new testament they're former christians and they have been sent to infiltrate israel and inside of both the government and or at least as far as their access to government officials as well as orthodox rabbis to discredit anything about Jesus Christ to make it look as if the New Testament was a complete fabrication from what I understand this information is also known by others as well that I hope to contact soon there are those out there trying to discredit our news work that we do here, the prophetic insights that we're giving, because they're also part of this Roman agenda. We have been infiltrated from different angles to try to manipulate the things that we're trying to do, even politically. But only by the grace of God does the Lord reveal to us those different areas and the avenues that Satan is using to attack us. The book that I'm writing right now, I won't speak about the title nor the contents. I'm very deep into this book. And the reason I cannot speak about it is I would love to have done many videos already about the insights that are being revealed on a daily basis. It's because Rome themselves are actually trying to find out that information because they're using that is their very tool to try to work with the Jewish community so that they would not believe that Yeshua is the Messiah. This is what's so troubling to us. So when we look at the situation around Damascus, I'm sure many of you, as we see that it's happening now, and some probably think, oh no, it's Russia and Syria that's bringing Damascus to a ruin. Well, they're not helping matters, I realize that. But again, you've not been told about what these jihadist groups that are being backed by NATO's allies and also Middle Eastern, Saudi Arabia, Qatar, and other nations there, Turkey, that they are relentlessly were bombing Damascus suburbs, not just Damascus suburbs, but Damascus itself and killing civilians there. Russia and Syria finally retaliated. But this is what it says. The burden of Damascus, behold, Damascus is taken away from being a city and it shall be a ruinous heap. It will be. But it's not just Russia. It'll be also the efforts that the United States, as Henry Lowendorf pointed out, the United States and their allies and the allies there in the Middle East are engaged with their propaganda and supporting these terrorist groups against the government that wouldn't have had the problem. And we know General Wesley Clark clearly said we were going to do it. So we can't pretend like Syria was doing something bad. General Wesley Clark pulled the plug on the Pentagon. We're going to take down Syria as well. 
The cities of Aurora are forsaken. They shall be for flocks which shall lie down and none shall make them afraid. The fortress also shall cease from Ephraim and the kingdom from Damascus. Why? When the kingdom of Damascus falls, the fortress for Ephraim, which are those of the house of Israel, the oldest church in the world is Damascus. They will fall. And as we saw in Henry Lowendorf's report, temporarily they have, the siege has been lifted. But the thousands of Christians that have been killed by those NATO-backed thugs. And does Israel really need that type of thugs to be running Syria? Do you think we're going to have peace with Syria if you have Al-Qaeda, Al-Nusra members running it? When they behead children and practice cannibalism? Are you serious? And it shall come to pass in that day that the glory of Jacob shall be made thin and the fatness of his flesh shall wax lean. Right? Now watch what happens. God says here in verse 10, For thou hast forgotten the rock of thy salvation, and thou hast not been mindful of the rock of thy stronghold. Therefore thou didst plant pleasant, ple, plant plants of pleasantness and didst set uh, with slips of a stranger. That's an adulterous affair. Showing that, show, that shows how sinister the plan was done. And, 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 and the thing is, in the day of thy planting, thou didst make it to grow, and in the morning thou didst make thy seed to blossom a heap of boughs in the day of grief and of desperate pain. Ah, the uproar of many peoples that roar like a roaring of seas and the rushing of nations that rush like the rushing of mighty waters. The nation shall rush like the rushing of many waters, but he shall rebuke them, and they shall flee far off and shall be chased as a chaff of the mountains before the wind and like a, 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 a whirling dust before the storm. The only reason Syria, this has happened to Syria, is because you have forgot the rock of your salvation. The European Union, the United States, supposed to be Christian nations that believe that Jesus Christ is truly the rock of your salvation. And even the modern state of Israel has not helped in matters none either. When they see that Damascus is getting an upper hand on, their, on, the, on Al-Qaeda, Al-Nusra, that is in the surrounding areas of, of Damascus, that's when we go in there and make airstrikes from Israel and take out some of those Syrian problems there so that they can continue to advance to take down Damascus. Prophecy is being fulfilled. But as Simon Tov, an Israeli-born believer in Yeshua, said to us the other day, Prime Minister Netanyahu is the man. But he said, I don't mean it in a good way. He said, he will cause biblical prophecy to be fulfilled as it causes the wars to come upon Israel as a result of our participation with NATO and the surrounding nations, Saudi Arabia, Qatar, and Turkey, and destroying a country that would have never been destroyed had we left them be. If you want to stand with this type of ministry, we certainly could use your support. God bless you. Thank you for watching. IsraeliNewsLive.org is our website. You can give online there. We will be leaving the first of next week to go back to uh, Europe, then later to Israel. And we thank you for your support and making the things possible that we will be doing while we're overseas for the next couple of months. If you send to our mailing address, which is on the screen here, it's still safe to do so. Uh, even if we are not here, those things will be held for us until we return. If you prefer, you can also send to Europe, and that would be okay as well. To our address there, that's on our website, P.O. Box 46, uh, Praha 15006, Praha 56, Czech Republic. That's the Institute, and God bless you, and thank you for watching.